Hi everyone, welcome. Welcome to my latest Art of Todd Knock broadcast, episode 6. Uh, this is uh, Sunday, August 28th, which is Jack the King uh, Kirby's birthday. Jack Kirby created a lot of our favorite comic book characters in the Marvel and uh, later on in the DC Universe. Um, so, we uh, every year on his birthday, the foundation, uh, Kirby for Heroes and Hero Initiative, do this Wake Up and Draw event where they invite artists, especially uh, professional comic artists, to uh, do an illustration, uh, kind of a wake up and draw, as in uh, when you wake up and you that kind of first uh, kind of rough sketch you do for the day, that warm-up sketch, uh, even though I'm doing my broadcast here at once, so I've been awake for a while, but it's Sunday, a lot of things going on, so I'm, I'm doing my wake up, do some act, uh, wake up, Enjoy the day, have lunch, then draw sort of uh, event. But so glad y'all are here. And if you're not familiar with Hero Initiative, Hero Initiative is um, a charity for that uh, raises funds to help comic creators who are kind of in their golden years uh, and need help with uh, medical bills or uh, paying mortgages or, 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 or other sorts of bills and stuff like that. So, so when you uh, make a donation to the Hero Initiative, you're helping your favorite comic creators, the creators that created the characters you love, uh, kind of make it through their uh, their re retirement years where things can get a little tight. So uh, they've helped out a lot of a lot of great 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 uh, artists, writers, creators that we all um, know and love. So uh, so thanks for helping this Hero Initiative. So today's illustration uh, right here on this official Hero Initiative artboard. Uh, I'm going to draw I'm, I'm going to draw Dark Side, the Jack Kirby Fourth World creation Dark Side. Uh, the, the, one of the biggest baddies in the in the DC universe. So I'm going to plug into the rig. I'm going to start drawing, and I'll try to answer and field as many questions as I can while I draw. But as always, a lot of my attention goes into the drawing, so I might miss your questions. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your understanding. I'll try to answer as many as I can. So let's get right to it. All right, let's plug into the rig here and get cracking. Welcome everyone to the broadcast, so glad you're here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for clicking like and uh, all those sorts of things. Thanks for uh, the support there. Thanks for sharing the broadcast on your Facebook page. All right, so now I gotta figure out what to have Darkseid doing here. Kinda start to rough in rough in the figure here so it's going to start really start off really sketchy if you're a long time reader of my comics you'll know that I drew dark side in several issues of Young Justice Young Justice uh, the, the original Young Justice series um, took, took part in the Our Worlds at War storyline and uh, ran into some of the they actually had a mission to Apocalypse, uh, Darkseid's planet. And Darkseid was also interested in the power of our character, The Secret, in his search for the anti-life equation. See, what's some advice for drawing a right, a left or right profile of the head? Um, well, my first, my first initial advice is to um, look up life reference. Look up uh, an image of the right or left side of, you know, a right or left side profile. And study the shapes and angles you see there. And see... See how you would um, translate that. Young Justice is the be best book that DC has ever published. Well, I appreciate that. I'm glad you enjoyed our series.
You like my quick sketching? All right, thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, a lot of this is just uh, kind of putting the puzzle together, kind of figuring out the process, just trying to get all the shapes in, trying to capture the mass of Darkseid. Darkseid is not a slender guy. He is a block, quite literally a block of a man. I guess he's not even really a man, is he? I have to remember that Facebook is a square screen, so I need to make sure I adjust which part of the sketch I'm working on so you can see the entirety there. So I apologize if I start to draw off frame. I'll try to remember to keep everything in the camera frame whenever possible. Keep the shoulders broad, barrel chested. Now some of the parts of his musculature here we will not see in the final illustration, but I draw it in to make sure everything's fitting together correctly, like his abs here. Just want to make sure I get the width of the character as accurate as possible, so I draw in, I rough in parts even though they'll be covered over by final details. This is called drawing all the way through. It'll help your characters maintain their proper sense of mass. Or you'll have a better chance of having the character maintain their proper sense of mass, I should say. Do I find it easier to draw big muscled characters or thinner slender characters? Um, no, it's not really either or. Uh, in comics you have to draw every size and shape of character, whether it's a muscled brute or a more slender character like Spider-Man or someone even more slender like Mr. Fantastic or someone that's just a normal sized human of all sorts of ages and shapes. So. So it, you're drawing all sorts of things, so uh, so it's not either or, it's just really, um, yeah, I like that I, there is so much variety. Keeps it fresh, keeps it fun. Let's, see, let's rework this hand here just a little bit. Other than Darkseid, who is my favorite new god? I would probably say Light Ray. I've always liked Light Ray. From New Genesis. Also like the Forever People. Oops, sorry about that. His feet totally not on the screen there, so sorry.
put some smoke through here like he's just he's just arrived he's just boom tubed here to earth and he's looking to uh, you know he's looking to wreak some havoc ready to take on the Justice League and whatnot yes this is the point three lead pencil HB lead is the softness that I use this is the Uni Kuratoga um, pen Zoom in here for some uh, details on the face. Got my classic um, dark side reference here to make sure I get his costume right. So I can show you what I'm working off of here. I'm going with a really classic look here. I want to make sure I get that headpiece as accurate as possible. This is a unique shape, how it forms around his head. Just a bit. I'll have his eyes glowing. Some Kirby crackles here. Can I, you enjoyed my Superboy broadcast, cast, broadcast, broadcast. Appreciate you tuning in. Can I draw Superboy Prime someday? Maybe. Uh, I get a lot of character suggestions, so I can never promise I can fulfill them, but uh, I will keep that in mind. I can at least say that. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. A little bit of a sneer there. Have ever drawn Doomsday? Uh, I have done some, you know, commission type stuff of Doomsday. So yeah, I even have a Doomsday post-it note sketch in my uh, post-it note album here on the Art of Todd Knock Facebook page. So yeah, Doomsday is a fun character to draw for sure. Is there an online site that I sell my pages through? Not at the moment. Uh, I represent myself. I don't have an art rep. So uh, I'm working on getting a e-commerce section to my website built where I can post my pages for easy sale. Um, stuff like Young Justice, Teen Titans Go, Spider-Man, and then eventually my uh, Deadpool stuff once my Deadpool comic starts coming out in October. Alright, I think I've got the generalized uh, shapes roughed in here. Next step is to uh, really flesh a lot of this out with the ink. So I'll put all the, the stony texture on dark side in the ink stage and then we'll we'll render 
render them out with uh, Copic markers. So let's pull back here a little bit so you can see him in its in his entirety. Oops, sorry, I hope that's not too much of a jostle. My apologies, gang. Maybe I won't zoom in and out too much here. Have you ever drawn the Marvel character Union Jack? I don't know if I have. Familiar with the character, but I don't know if I've ever drawn him. I might have drawn him as a con convention sketch long ago, but I don't definitely haven't drawn him recently, if I've drawn him at all. is well, funnest character to draw one one that I draw that's more fun than than others uh, interesting question yeah um, I don't know if I could say there's the funnest character to draw I like drawing a lot of different ca kind of characters so so I don't think I could say who is the funnest character to draw But I do like drawing X-Men characters. I will say that. So you will see a lot of X-Men characters. When I have downtime, I'm often drawing my favorite X-Men characters. So I can at least say that that much. But I love drawing just about all sorts of kinds of superheroes. Oops, sorry. Was I, draw I keep forgetting that his feet are not on the screen. I also have to remember to slide up. Draw his feet, then slide back down. Slide it back down to the next thing I'm drawing. So, thanks for bearing with me, gang. All right, let's let's move into inks here, and we'll start with the face. I'm gonna use my Pigma Micron multiliners. So right now we're gonna start on the very on his eye, the the very facey part of his face, is what I was gonna say. <laughs> right mid-edit there, kind of started coming out sideways. Um, so we're going to start with the brow, eyes, and uh, get those curvy crackles going since they're going to overlap his his head and helmet. want to remember to maintain the cragged, 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 craggedliness. Really working hard to make that an actual word. The crags on his face, the rock type of look. Let's go ahead and I'm going to zoom in here, gang, so it's going to get a little bouncy. Just so you can see it, the details of the face a little bit better. Then I'll zoom back out when I start working on the, the body. So we keep things in frame a bit better. How's my camera currently set up? I've got a gooseneck arm clamp. It's extent. It's kind of those goosenecks. You can position it and adjust it as needed. So that's clamped to the. Right now, until I get my bookcases up or my bookshelves, I should say, in my new office here, I need to uh, use actually a, a kitchen chair. So it's clamped to the back of a kitchen chair here right now. For the time being. Let's see, I'm using the 005 here, uh, Micron. Someone asked what size Microns am I using right now. It's the 005 for these really tiny details. Start now. Don't want the artwork to get muddied by using too thick of a, of a, of a sized tip. really helps for the, like the 
the stony crags across his face. To have this fine tip. Let's try to read a question there. It's a little long. Do I find I'm more valuable as an artist to prospective employers now that I ink my own pieces? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm more valuable. I know that my editors do appreciate that I, I am capable of inking my own work, but there are a lot of great inkers out there, so if, if an inker is ever needed, uh, it's not, not difficult to find someone to come in and drop some inks. Ever thought about putting out a tutorial book? Uh, haven't thought of it currently, no. Uh, I've been so busy with actually doing comic books, drawing comic books, which is my passion. Uh, doing a tutorial book has not, has not been a consideration at this time. But who knows what the future holds? I mean, maybe one day I, I will do uh, just such a book if there's a, you know, if there's an interest for it. You know, big enough interest to make it a worthwhile project. Now let's start to render out some of these uh, Kirby Crackles before I ink his helmet. Have ever created my own version of costumes of my favorite X-Men or other superheroes? Um, I don't know if I have done that. Let's see, we're going to switch over here to a uh, Pigma Micron uh, brush pen. I'm going to use the MB here to get some bigger crackles. A little easier to do than using the uh, micron pen and get more varied shapes from the from the brush pen easier to make those dots as well Have I ever drawn Dr. Manhattan? Not that I can remember, but maybe I have. I've done a lot of uh, sketches at conventions, so, um, so I could very well have done one then. But I can't seem to recall. Alright, now let's move to the zero one here. To ink in his headgear. How long does the average comic book take to complete? To pencil and ink a comic, I get about roughly four weeks for a regular 20-page comic book. And I average about a page a day of pencils and inks. switch back to the zero 08. First, not switch back, we're picking up the zero 08 for the first time, I guess, here. 
Or I guess we used Summit is 08 when we first started the Kirby Crackles, so... So I am picking it back up then. It's like I had to have used it once, the tip was already off, the cap was already off, I should say. What type of paper am I using? This is a piece of uh, Bristol board that the Hero Initiative sent. You can see there their Hero Initiative logo. So, um, yeah, so essentially it is Bristol board. What kind of cases do I use to hold my pens? Uh, I just use a regular little pencil case for when I take my pens to conventions. I think it's a pencil case I got on uh, jetpens.com when I was restocking my pens. But here in my office they just sit on my my drafting table. I don't like keep them in a case. What do I recommend for practicing specific trouble areas? For example, uh, hands. Um, well, I think the key, the key uh, idea there, I think you kind of hit on it, is practice. It's that continued repetition, that continued trying. So, so my first answer to that is to, one, continue to practice, continue to draw, continue to put pencil to paper, and, uh, and, um, work, you know, you kind of work it out a as you go. But then also, I would say add to that study. Study hands. Study that problem area. When I had, uh, one of my problem areas was uh, drawing cows. Many of my regular uh, Periscope or Facebook broadcast viewers or YouTube viewers know the story of me and having to draw a cow in my, in the Robert Kirkman series I was doing called Invincible Universe. And um, I'm just not very adept at drawing cows. They're not really my favorite thing to draw. So because it was going to be more of a challenge for me and I wanted my cow to look, you know, as good as possible, um, I went and I purchased a a uh, cow figurine, a little PVC figurine from uh, Michael's Craft Stores. And I was able to look at that from all the different angles I'd need to draw the cow in depending on the the uh, the panel layout. And I also uh, worked that with some uh, photo reference that I looked up online. So uh, between photo reference and having a little toy cow model, I was able to um, overcome that, that challenge. In fact, at the end of it, uh, the scene, my editor and the writer was like, they were asking me why I was complaining about drawing cows. They thought I did a great job drawing the cow. So, mission accomplished. But it took extra time, study, and research to, uh, to get to that place. So that's my, my best example of where study comes in and um, really just kind of pushing through that problem area. Don't avoid it. That's, my, that's another big advice is don't avoid the problem area because then you will never level up. And you'll do a lot of bad drawings before you start doing the good drawings. So you got to keep at it. That's why we say continued practice, continued putting pencil to paper. Have I ever drawn the Silver Surfer? Yeah, I've drawn him a few times. Oh, hello, Will Robson. Welcome, everyone. Meet Will Robson, artist of Great Lakes Avengers, the new Marvel comic coming out this uh, this October. I had the pleasure of meeting Rob for the first time at the London Film at Comic Con. Glad you're here, Rob. Welcome.
Steven Sanchez, another artist friend of mine. Welcome, Steven. Steven drew a backup story for one of my uh, Wild Guard uh, comics, one of the Where Are They Now short stories. Uh, Mover and Shaker, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, Steven. Glad you're here as well. What's my favorite character to draw from the DC or Marvel or Indie? Welcome, Aries. Uh, appreciate you joining me here for my broadcast. My longtime viewers know the answers to this question. My favorite Marvel character is Kitty Pride. My favorite DC character is Booster Gold. My favorite indie character, I'm going to say, is my creator owned character's Wild Guard. A team of superheroes. Did I call you Rob, Will? Did I say Will Robson? Sometimes I want to say Rob Wilson. I don't know why that is. But hopefully I called you Will. Oh, hey gang. Hopefully uh, that didn't black out on y'all. I've been having problems with my Wi-Fi here for these uh, uh, Facebook broadcasts. I need to figure out what that problem is. So hopefully we didn't black out too much there. Why do I like Kitty Pride from X-Men? Uh, lots of reasons. Uh, first off is uh, she's awesome. Second, she is, um, I think, just a really cool character. I think uh, I like that she is smart. She is funny. She doesn't take, take any guff off of anyone. You know, she stands up for herself. And, uh, which is pretty awesome for someone who doesn't have a, you know, an offensive power like Cyclops or Super Strength or Armor like Colossus or Claws like Wolverine. So, uh, you know, she she can just pass through walls. You know, it's a, more of a defensive power. But, um, but you know, the, the person who she is is, I think, just really cool. I kind of grew up with her because she was a teenager when I was a teenager reading X-Men comics. And I just thought she was a really cool character. Do people ever send me tribute drawings of my favorite characters? Uh, they'll pass them on to me at uh, conventions, yes. I've had people give me illustrations of, well, Kitty Pride and Booster. I've had people draw me as Booster Gold. So I've gotten a, a, a couple of pieces of fan art that are people re people's renditions of me. And then people have drawn their favorite Young Justice characters or Teen Titans Go characters. Characters that I'm known for, you know, some of my hits, I guess one would say. And, um... And so they'll they'll bring their fan art of the books I've of the characters I, I'm known for drawing, and um, you know I, I save them all. I have a I have a I have a file of all the fan art that I, I'm given, and uh, I save every piece. I've gotten quite a big collection as well now here over the the years. It's actually a FedEx box to main, make sure I can uh, hold it all, keep it all safe because it's all different sized artwork. My thoughts on Invincible ending. It's kind of bittersweet, you know. It's just mostly bitter, you know, that it that it that it has to end. Or that you know Robert's choosing to end it, but it's had a great run. It's you know one of the longest running image titles, along with Savage Dragon, Spawn, Walking Dead. So, um, so I think it's had a had a great run, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll miss it, but I look forward to seeing, you know, the new stuff that uh, Robert and uh, Ryan 
will do. See, so let's uh, since the smoke overlaps the leg here, we're gonna make sure. Get this in first. What's my monthly pull list? Uh, right now, since I'm working for Marvel, a lot of Marvel stuff. Um, so, all the X-Men books, Amazing Spider-Man. I think most of the Avengers books, if not all of them. Um... Guardians of the Galaxy, Star-Lord, for sure, because i got to get my Kitty Pride fixed now that she's a Guardian of the Galaxy, rather than an X-Men at the moment. Now, I'm a couple of months behind, so she might have gone back to the X-Men by now, and I, I'm not aware of that, because I'm, I'm like two months, actually three to four months behind on some of the titles I read. And now that uh, DC Rebirth has kicked in, which I did read that 80-page special, I will be um, trying to get caught back up on my DC Comics reading. Who are my favorite non-comic book artists? I would say uh, Norman Rockwell, uh, Drew Struzan. Um, most of it's comic books, though. I just have a passion for comics. But those two guys are definitely some of my favorites. I'm very inspirational artists as well. What am I drawing? I'm drawing Dark Side here. Dark Side from The New Gods, one of Jack Kirby's creations here as we celebrate Jack Kirby's 99th or what would have been his 99th birthday. He he passed away in 1994 and uh just before I broke into the industry, so I never had a chance to meet him. But, um, highly, highly influential comic creator, creating much of the Marvel Universe, and a, some really cool, funky stuff for the DC Universe with the new gods. Have I ever created, uh, considered doing a, a, a creator-owned solo superhero comic? Um... I have a few other ideas of what I want to do creator-owned-wise, and none of them are a solo character book, oddly enough. I think I, I really enjoy the team dynamic. Um, I like the, the interplay of, of the different powers and characters and personalities, which is why I like books like the X-Men and Teen Titans and Justice League and... Avengers so much because you get so many heroes and uh, such bigger storylines at times when you have so many characters together in one book so I think that's probably so I but you never know maybe one day I will come up with a solo character idea Actually, no, I, I, there was one of my wild guard characters I wanted to do as a solo character book so now that I think about it I do have a had a solo character idea. I won't say what that idea is right now, of course, but I have. So to answer your question, yes, I have. Now that I think about it, I have. Considered doing a solo character, creator own series. So something to keep in mind, young artists, is when you're when you're drawing your whatever it is you're drawing, be careful about where you put your lines. You don't want to create tangents. Like right here, I did not want to start this smoke at the same place as his hem of his tunic, or ending at right at the line of his um, glove. So I I, um, 
I, I'm mindful of where lines start and stop. You don't want any lines to make it look like they're a continuation of another line of another object. It is not pleasing to the eye in many regards. It can be a bit confusing to the eye. So, you want to be careful for tangents. Have I ever met David Finch? I have, yes. He's a great guy. Haven't seen him in a while. But we definitely, I remember when, I think I remember one of the first times we met was at one of the early Long Beach Comic Cons back in the day. Have I ever drawn silk? Have I ever? I just did a mini series that starred silk. It's called The Amazing Spider Man and Silk. Uh, four issue mini series called The Spider Fly Effect. And all four issues are out now. You can go check it out. It's fun to draw little debris flecks, little embers, or bits. Little bits. Getting those little bits in there. Always fun. So I prefer Kitty Pride with Colossus or Kitty Pride with Star Lord? Hmm. Interesting question. Um. Well, I'm behind on my comic book reading, but last I read is that Kitty Pride and Star Lord had kind of broken up, or at least they called off their engagement. So uh, I don't know if she's they have gotten back together or they're working things out. But when I started reading X Men, actually, it was um, just after the first Secret Wars, and uh, that's when Colossus had met the. Um, the alien healer, how you say her name, Zaji, Zaji, and uh, had fallen in love with her, so he, he and Kitty, Kitty Pride broke up. So I never really got to know them as a dating couple. Um, so because when I started reading about Kitty Pride, she was now single, freshly single. I had I remember reading the issue where they they broke up, and it didn't really have as much weight to me at the time because I was still getting to know the characters. So, you know, I was filling in the blanks that they were, they had been dating and that. So when, when Colossus was falling for Zaji during the uh, Secret Wars, I didn't really realize that he had a girlfriend back home. So that was kind of a, kind of a douchebag move on uh, Colossus's part there. But when you're trapped on an alien world and you never know if you'll, you don't know if you'll ever make it home, I guess... You might make different choices. Not that I agree with them necessarily. You know, you're going to fight to get back home. But all this to say, do I like Kitty Pride better with Colossus or Star-Lord? Um, I don't know. I, I, I can't answer that question, I guess. That was a long, winding road of randomness to to get to an answer that really was no answer. So thanks for um, thanks for your patience. <laughs> I just like Kitty Pride in general. But I do want her to find the right guy. Star Lord might be that guy. Colossus could be that guy. They've learned and grown a lot, or at least Colossus, has, I believe, has grown a lot since, since that his trip to Battle World the first time. That's right, Rob, you did draw that issue. I did read that issue. So are they now officially back together as of that issue with the collector? They're not still engaged, though, right? They're kind of, like, dating again, but they're not really fast-tracking fast -tracking it to the altar. Because 
because I do remember reading those issues. Is it, what, issues six and seven, I think, or seven, eight? How do I feel about dark side short skirt? I don't see it as a skirt. I see it as a tunic. You know, it's like saying, like a like a Roman centurion. You know how they wore those tunics. So it's not really so much of a skirt as it is a tunic, in my opinion. Let's uh, pull this back here a little bit. Apologize for the jostle. There we go. Let's see, where's my uh, eraser here? Statler Mars plastic eraser. Pull out all these pencil lines, then we'll take it to the Copic colors. Would I ever draw a Wonder Woman book? Uh, sure. If DC offered that to me, I'd be happy to discuss that with them. And have I ever drawn the Martian Manhunter? Yes. I drew him in Young Justice. Issue 6 and during uh, Sins of Youth. Alright. Well, let's see. I need to finish the ground here using a French curve because I kind of have a slight curve here to the uh, to the ground. Where's my 08? Alright. What was the first Marvel book I did? Uh, technically, the very first Marvel book I worked on was when I was still in art school. As a youth, um, I was able to score a, uh, a one-page gag in Marvel's humor comic book called What The. So it was What The number 21. That's my first paid published work was with Marvel. Be a while later on until I do work with Marvel again. Actually, I got hired by Rob Liefeld to work at Extreme Studios. From there, that led me to DC Comics to work on Young Justice and Teen Titans. I did, uh, before I did Young Justice, I did do a couple of fill-in issues. Of, I'm using the uh, Copic Marker B12 here for the initial blue here on uh, Dark Side. Uh, B12. Um, I did do a couple of fill-in issues on um, Sensational Spider-Man before taking over young, or starting Young Justice. But uh, I wouldn't come back to Marvel to do full-time work until... Uh, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man did some fill-in issues there, which led to me to doing the Back in Black storyline. And then I was pretty plugged in at Marvel at that point. Have I used, ever used any other brands besides Co Copics? Um, I've had other marker companies. You know, they come by our tables at Artist at Art the Artist Alley and at uh, San Diego Comic Con and and share samples of, of their, of their products, you know, in hopes that we'll, um, you know, become customers of, of, of their, of their products. So I've used some stuff like Touch and Prismacolor, but I'm, I'm a Copic guy through and through. I've, uh, you know, once I got plugged into working with Copics and, and, uh, investing so much in my Copic collection, there was really no re reason to to change directions in uh, 
marker brand, you know, I, I'd already, it's like, I want to keep it consistent. So, no, I don't use other, other brands of markers. Not to say I don't like them or that they're not good, it's just, I think, I think Copics could very well be the best. I do love how they blend, I love that they're refillable, I love that the tips are replaceable. And, uh... And my collection, you know, is, is, it's, there's a big investment there, so, so why would I change, you know, there's no reason for me to change, change, change course, at least not at this time. Yes, it was back in black. Spider-Man back in, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man black in, back in black, when he had the black costume again during the Civil War, the first Civil War. Yeah. That was, uh, I, I did, that, that, uh, was a Sandman, was our, was our villain, and we had Spider-Man 2211, I believe was our, uh, one of our guest stars. Really fun to work with Peter David again, after our time on Young Justice. What I used to ink the piece, I used um, Pigma Micron multiliners, Pigma Micron pens, the 08, 005, and the 01. Which comic book pencilers did I look to up to as inspiration? Um, as a teenager and a huge X-Men fan, my favorite, or the artists that most heavily influenced me were the X-Men art. Uh, let's see, that would be Arthur Adams, Rick Leonardi, um, Walter Simonson, and Alan Davis. Those were my, some of my earliest influences, along with Mike Zeck, um, Mark Silvestri, Brett Blevins, John Byrne. And on and on and on. But I would say my my most formative four would be Arthur Adams, Rick Leonardi, Walter Simonson, and Alan Davis. Uh, what do I think of the high-tech C pens? I haven't used the high-tech C pens. Actually, this is the first I'm hearing of them. I'll have to check those out. Anyone's just tuned in, I want to say thank you for joining us here for my uh, Wake Up and Draw art broadcast. Though I've been awake for quite a few hours, I'm just now getting to the draw part of the day. We are celebrating Jack Kirby's, what would be Jack Kirby's 99th birthday today. He was born in 2017, or two, he was born in 1917, so it being 2016. He'd be 99 years old today. He passed away in 1994, February of 1994. All right, so now let's uh, switch over to the little darker blue here for some shadows, some B45.
is the Tombow brand of markers good to use? I've never used Tombow. I think I've heard of them, but I've never used them. So I, I certainly can't speak to that. Did I ever meet him? I'm not... Oh, did I ever meet, uh... Jack Kirby, no, I didn't. I'd just gotten hired by Rob Liefeld uh, to work at Extreme Studios back in the early days of Image Comics in January of 1994. I was fresh out of uh, art school. About a year out of art school. So very excited, but I wouldn't be moving out to California for another three months. So, and, and Jack passed away early, in early uh, of February of, uh, of that year. So by the time I moved out to California, he had already he had already passed on. Um, so I'd never had never had a chance to to meet to meet him. What writer would I like to work with? Um, golly, that's a, a great question. Um, I've gotten to work with so many awesome writers. Um, and uh, now I have the honor of calling, calling so many of them my friends now. Um, but writers I haven't worked with that I would like to work with, man. That'd be a pretty long list. Probably be fun to work off of a Bendis, Brian Michael Bendis script someday. Haven't had that opportunity yet. Um, I've, made, I've met and made friends with writers I haven't worked with yet, like Brendan Fletcher, Joshua Williamson. Actually, I've known Joshua a long time. I knew him before he was a writer, back when he was working at a comic shop here in SoCal. Really great guy. We'd talk about Scrubs every time we'd see each other at a SoCal convention. We'd always talk about Scrubs and other sitcoms. We're both sitcom guys. We really enjoy the sitcoms. Um, in case you hadn't heard, we both like sitcoms. So, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it'd be fun to actually team up with Joshua. Um, I've enjoyed his writing. Um, love to work with my pal Zeb Wells again. We've only done one story, the Spider-Man meets Obama story. We've been friends for a long time. That's the only time we've gotten a chance to actually work together on a comic. So let's kick in with a little darker shade of blue. So some B97 for some of the deeper cuts. Jeff Loeb, I have actually have worked with a Jeff Loeb on a, on a story. It was a short story for uh, President Lex. It's a two-page story inked by Klaus Janssen, which was an honor. I love Klaus Janssen's inks. Steven, your wife's still in at you to wash the dishes. I appreciate that you're enjoying my art, but dude, dishes got to get washed. As soon as we're done with this broadcast, you go wash those dishes, man. So now we're going to switch over to some B12 here to kind of blend some of these blues into the white that I've left open here.
This is how I like to blend my colors. I don't like to use the colorless blender for blending. I like to use it for maybe certain special effects. But when it comes to blending my colors, I like to put in my mid-tone, then come in with the darker colors, then come over them with the lighter colors to, um, to blend it all together. Kind of brings all those dark shades. Kind of, kind of smooths it all out. It's kind of a blending technique I kind of stumbled into. And one of the reasons why I enjoy the Copic markers is that they blend so well. And even though I'm going over darker blues with this lighter blue, it's not inf infecting the tip of the lighter color, which is a great thing with Copic markers. And if for some reason your tip gets of your marker gets infected, you can just pop that out, put in a replacement, and you're good to go. So you never have to buy a new marker necessarily. Or you very rarely have to buy a new marker. You added my Deadpool, my, my Deadpool book to your pull list. I appreciate that. That's the kind of stuff a comic creator wants to hear. We want to know that you're reading our comics and that you're telling your shop to order it for you because that's where, um, where things really, you know, that, 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 that's, that's fantastic support. So thank you for that. Thank you very, very much. I truly appreciate that. And I really hope you'll enjoy my Deadpool miniseries. It's also beneficial to your comic book shop because then that helps them to know what to order to um, order accurately and helping out your comic shop with that so that they, they can uh, st stay afloat so they know what to order and, and how many of what to order. So adding it to your pull list, that just works in so many ways. One, gets the comic ordered. Two, it keeps the shop in business. And three, you make sure you don't miss out on your favorite titles. So that's what I call the win-win-win. Alright, so there's our blues. Next up, uh, what is next? Let's, let's get the craggy scrin, scrin? Scrin. Skin. Craggy skin in here. I need my grays. So let's start with a four here. Cool gray number four. Yes, perfect shade. That's my mid-tone range marker. You're thinking of which books you'll bring for me to sign at New York Comic Con? You're thinking of the Young Justice trades? Yeah, please do. That'd be great. Please do bring those. And as soon as uh, New York Comic Con, if they haven't already, give, has given us our uh, Artist Alley table assignments, I'll be posting about where to find me at New York Comic Con. So, uh, so you can easily track me down. Oh, hey, Rich. Yes, I'll see you at Long Beach. Hope you're enjoying your lunch break. So I'm coming in with some cool gray six here for some heavy shadows. And this part of the spot of his tunic will be filled in black eventually. Hey, 
Have I committed to any cons for next year like Emerald City Comic Con? I have not committed to any cons yet. I am fielding a lot of invites, but it's been so hectic. I have not been able to commit to any 2017 cons yet. But I will be posting about all my 2017 appearances on all my social media, as well as ToddKnock.com. So we probably won't, I won't get, be getting into announcements until later this year or early next year. Once I start to lock in which conventions I'll be at. Now I'm using the Cool Gray 3 to, uh, to blend these darker shades together. Actually, I forgot the shades on his face. There we go. Do I do many videos? This is your first one you've seen, and, and you think it's amazing? I appreciate that. Oh, shout out from the UK. Well, hello. Kelly from, Kellyanne from the UK. Uh, yes, if you go to youtube.com slash totknock, you'll see probably about s well over 70 art videos. Much of stuff like this. Some original uh, material created just for YouTube. Many currently now are my Periscopes or uh, an upcoming Facebook broadcast. This is my sixth episode here on Facebook. So, um, so these have not gone up on my YouTube channel yet, but they will. Uh, if, if the footage turns out uh, correctly and then... Um, so yeah, so there's lots to, to see. Thanks so much for joining us. And welcome to all the other first-timers. If it's your first-timer, first time here, feel free to give a, a shout. So a little cool gray five here in the blues here, just to kind of drop in some more shadows on the blue. Do I listen to music or watch TV while I while I work on a book, while I draw a book. I, I listen to TV. Uh, I'm not doing that now because, um, you know, it's a broadcast here and I, I want to have, don't want any copyrighted material in my video for posting to YouTube later on, so, so that's why I don't listen while I broadcast. Um, but while I'm doing my regular work, yeah, I, I listen to TV shows. Have you ever drawn Gwenpool? Uh, yes, I did a cover for the Gwenpool holiday special uh, last year. Let's see, let's go for some C2 now. Cool gray 2 for his belt. Leaving a white shine down the middle of each section of the belt. I'm going to come up with some B000 here to give it kind of a silvery look. Your daughter is 12 and drawing with Copics right now. You're showing her the broadcast and she's inspired. Well, hello to Amelia. Keep on drawing, Amelia. And keep having fun. I remember drawing at age 12. That's a good time. Good time in life. Joey Vasquez. Hey, how's it going, Joey? New young artist from the from the Midwest. Joey Vasquez, you're working on a, a head sketch uh, of me like you did for Ed McGinnis. Right on. I can't wait to see you post that. I'm sure it will be on your uh, Instagram. Let's come in with a little C4 here. Drop in a little... Kind of a shadow here, for lack of a better term. Kind of separation of the light to dark. All right, so now we gotta get these Kirby crackles going. First off, I want to uh, put some red in his eyes, some R24 here. And then we're gonna use a series of oranges. Oranges? Oranges and reds, yeah. Oranges and reds. So some YR07 to start. It's like he's powering up to do an Omega Beam Blast. Oh, 
Oh, hello to you, France. Welcome, France. I think I also saw Birmingham, Alabama signed in. It's great to have people from all over the, the world here tuning in. Really appreciate it, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's see, I see a little spot of blue I missed. Boink. Oh, so that next uh, shade of orange was the YR12. This is the YR12 that I put here over the YR07. Let's come in with a little uh, red 20, R27. Oh, Algeria. Thank you, Sam. I'm glad you love my drawings. Appreciate that. Appreciate the support from everyone. Glad to know people in Algeria like what I'm doing. When did I first know that I wanted to be an artist? Great question. Um, I always loved drawing. Earliest memories uh, as a little kid were of drawing. So I always knew that I liked to draw. Um, let's go ahead and fill in this black area That's for the moment. Uh, so I always knew that I loved to draw and create my own characters, cartoon type characters. Um, but then when I got into junior high, eighth grade, I started reading comic books, starting with the Marvel superheroes Secret Wars. And um, then I started creating my own superheroes and drawing my favorite superheroes. And then a friend of mine in art school said, you know, or not at art school, high school, my friend of mine in high school in uh, French class, he said, uh, you're always reading comics and drawing superheroes. Have you ever tried to make your own? And that had never occurred to me. And so that night, I, after school, I took some printer paper, folded it in half, wrote and drew an eight-page comic in one night. And it was so much fun creating something out of nothing. Coming in with some neutral, neutral four here to give a kind of a variation to the sculptor, sculpture, the sculpting of his muscles here, the shadowing, just kind of gives it a little bit of a different texture coming in with a, 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 a variation of, of the grays. Uh, so th th it was then, age age uh, 15, that I realized I wanted to be a, a comic book artist after making that first mini-comic. And I started to teach myself how to draw comics by looking at my favorite favorite artists. I'm so sorry this was off the screen, so I was just cutting into these places here on the side of the, side of the jaw, the uh, bottom of his chin, through the brow here, underneath the eyes, so that the red pops out a little bit more. So that's when I first knew I wanted to be an artist professionally, was age 15. So I set my sights on being a comic book artist, and I never looked back. Even when I attended the Art Institute of Dallas and studied commercial art and graphic design, I was there to apply anything I could learn towards drawing comics. They did not teach anything about drawing comics. Didn't expect them to. I knew that going, going into it. But I knew I was going to utilize whatever information I could get from them and apply it to comics, so had to be a real self-starter in that in that regard. So yeah, so that was some neutral four there. Let's put in some grays here in the in the smoke wafting off of his landing. Some neutral neutral four, or not neutral warm gray warm gray four. Warm gray because um, dark side is mostly cool colors with the the blue and the cool gray and the silvery sort of effects. So these are all cooler colors. So I want warm gray to contrast that coolness. Otherwise, it would all start to really look the same. So I want, that's why I'm choosing warm gray here. What's my favorite superhero movie? Um, I don't know really have a favorite superhero movie. I mean, I really enjoy the Marvel movies. I really like uh, um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I, I enjoyed the Avengers movies. Just because I love that they got all those heroes into one movie. Especially Civil War. Holy moly, that tarmac fight was one of my favorite battle scenes in a superhero movie. Spider-Man was awesome. Cannot wait for the Tom Holland movie. I, 
that might be end up being my favorite superhero movie. Got to get my expectations lowered there. I'm so excited for for the uh, to see what Marvel Cinematic Universe does with uh, with Spidey now. But I really did enjoy Spidey in in uh, Civil War, Captain America Civil War. Is there a website I can recommend for good deals on Copic markers? Unfortunately, no. I don't have a website that I can recommend. I get my Copic markers at a uh, at my local art supply store, and they have a nice discount on their uh, art supplies. So I don't really buy many of my Copics online. If I've ever needed one in a rush, I'll, I'll go to Amazon, or like if I need a refill bottle of ink. All right, so let's uh, shift down to the warm two. How do you find my videos inspirational? Thank you very much. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the support. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for uh, taking the time to say so. And for everyone who has taken the time to say something complimentary like that, I'm sorry I can't catch them all. But I appreciate, appreciate everyone's support. Through the likes, the follows, the comments, thumbs ups and, and hearts. Thank you very, very, very much. Um, I see my phone's getting into low battery mode, so i got to plug in the charger here. Yeah. Pull down my whole uh, plug rig. There we go. Sorry for the jostle gang. All right, so I got some warm, warm two there. Let's color this rubble here. It's a little warm five. Maybe cut some warm five through the through the smoke. So I come to UK cons. I went to my very first UK con uh, last month. I was at London Film and Comic Con. Had a great time. It was my first time in London. Hope to come back. Some little flex and dots in here. A little dust flex. Often do I do videos like this? Uh, thank you. Um, well, I try to broadcast whenever I have time, either here or on Periscope. On periscope.tv slash Um And then I also have my YouTube channel. So um, make sure you uh, follow me on all those places so that you uh, don't miss a uh, don't miss a broadcast. Let's see. Just a little bit of a background shade here. So I'm coming in with some BG90. Just to kind of fade out from the smoke. And behind dark side. Philippines, hey Philippines, welcome. So we kind of have kind of a, this BG90 gives kind of a dreary look to the 
the background. Maybe a little, a little cool gray one. Just to texture it out a little bit. Just subtle texture, don't want it to overpower dark side. And then let's see, um, let's take some warm seven. Just put a little ground underneath them here. Some warm eight. Let's kind of switch it up here with a little bit. Some neutral four. To kind of give uh, some different colors and textures to the to the ground. And then some uh, neutral one. Pull back here a little bit if I can. Yeah, I'll hold it up like this, and there's uh, the finished. Uh, dark side piece. Let me put my autograph on here. And today's date is the 28th of August 2016. There we go. So um, I will... Uh, no, there's been a lot of questions and comments. I missed a lot of those. So what I'll do here is flip the camera around, do a quick Q&A, and then we'll sign off for the day. So stay tuned. I'm just going to flip around here, reposition my camera so I can read your questions. Oh, were there any questions? I know I missed a lot. I want to say thanks for everyone for tuning in. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll answer a handful of questions here. So if you have them, go ahead and type them out, post them right now, and I'll see um, see what I can answer. Why dark side? Uh, any particular reason? Um, one I asked on Twitter, would people rather see me draw a Marvel Kirby creation or a DC Kirby creation? And DC edged out, so I had to pick a DC character. And I'd already drawn Mr. Miracle two years ago. So I was just trying to figure what character would people enjoy, and I've had a lot of people ask about Darkseid in the past, so that's why I chose Darkseid. And plus, I think he's a cool character. Do I like Olivier Coipel's work? Yes, I do. Love it. Um, you're the best Doctor Who cosplayer. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I do enjoy cosplaying as the 10th Doctor. Um, you're getting a first uh, set of Co gray Copic soon? Excellent. What Copic color markers would I suggest someone who can only afford to get a few? My suggestion is go to find an art supply store that sells Copic markers, go and then test them out, see which colors you like. So, at the very least, try getting some gray. So you can do grayscale illustrations, and then as your skills progress, you can start adding colors. That's what I did uh, starting back in 2009. Can I tell you about my amazing color pencils? I don't have color pencils, really, except for a white color pencil, which I did not use in this illustration, so I can't really answer a question like that. Your confession, you don't read comics, but you loved watching my, my, me draw. Well, I appreciate you watching me draw. Thanks for supporting me here online. If you, if you can't support me by, by buying my comic books, at least, at least come and watch me draw and uh, give me some clicks some some likes and uh, some shares there. So uh, so thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Do I prefer Thor Odinson or Jane Foster as Thor? You know they're doing great stuff with Jane Foster. Um, so so that's that's pretty awesome. You know uh, there have been a lot of people who have held the mantle of Thor. So uh, but I do like Thor Odinson as well. I like it all really. I even like Frog Thor. Frog Thor is awesome. Let's see what other type of markers do you use. Uh, for colors, I just strictly use the Copic uh, sketch markers. Th those, those are my jam. For inking, the Pigma Micron uh, pens, Copic multi-liners, and uh, uh, the Pigma brush pens.
do I draw any anime like Dragon Ball or any other like Sailor Moon? And no, not right now. I have not done, drawn any anime type characters for a broadcast yet. Who knows what the future might hold? Maybe someday I will draw some anime type characters. Um, but I currently haven't drawn any any anime. My anime that I grew up with was more like um, uh, Force Five Shogun Warriors, like Dangard Ace, Guy King, uh, Star Blazers. Uh, Battle of the Planets, G-Force. Oh my gosh, I love G-Force. So, um, so those were the animes I grew up on. What camera do I use? The iPhone 6 Plus. So, so it's been a few years. How much do you miss The Office right now? You know, I watch, The Office is in heavy rotation when I draw. I love The Office. Huge fan. I'm a huge fan of The Office. Um, I even, uh, I guess, oh, well, I've, I've dressed up as Jim for uh, like three, three hole punch Jim. For, uh, for for Halloween. And I've also uh, dressed as the Nard Dog, Andy Bernard, for Halloween one year as well. So, uh, yeah, I do love The Office. Do I miss it? I do miss it. But, you know, they had nine great seasons, um, and they're on heavy rotation on my Netflix. I own all the DVDs as well. Um, will I ever draw myself in a comic book? I have drawn myself in a comic book. See if you can find me. Uh, let's see. My Gambit is a sketch on your phone. Do I plan on drawing him live soon? Uh, who knows? Who knows? I never know who I'm going to draw until it's time for the broadcast. Most times. You have a graphic novel script and you need an artist. How much for my services? I'm not available right now. I am completely booked up. I'm doing a Deadpool series for Marvel, so I'm not able to take on uh, any new projects. Plus, I have my own side projects that I'm trying to find time to, to work on. So I am currently not available, but I wish you all the best with your graphic novel. So we can take a couple more questions here, and then I've got I got a roll. So um, whenever I make my next live stream, can I do it in the chibi style? I don't know. I certainly can't make any promises, but you never know. That's a, that's a fun idea. Maybe I will do a chibi uh, broadcast sometime. Do I have a favorite artist? I've got a lot of favorite artists. I have a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. But I'd say if I had to pick one all-time favorite artist, my ride or die, Arthur Adams. One of the biggest influences on my, on my art when I was a teenager. And I still absolutely love his stuff nowadays. Fantastic artist. Check him out. My favorite independent comic? Uh... Hmm. Maybe The Tick? Does that count? Does The, the Tick count? I'm going to say The Tick. That's my answer. Locking it in. I was going to use a phone a friend, but I didn't want to spend it on, on this question. Like they could help me. How many comics are personally in my, or am I currently in my personal uh, collection? A bajillion. A bajillion comics. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember how many I have. I've lost count, but it's, it's a lot. Let's see, what do I think, what do you think the art school gave you, and do you suggest it, or just solo work? I'm not sure that, what you mean by the, by just solo work, but art school, yes, it did help me. And, and I'll end on this, because it's a part of my artistic testimony. When I was a kid, I thought, I'm going to break into comics on sheer talent alone. I know some artists have done it, and I'm going to do it too, because I didn't want to bother going to college. I didn't want to, I didn't want to waste the time or money to do that. So I graduated high school, all my friends are going off to college, I'm staying at home. Drawing my sample pages, going to conventions, getting critiques, and I'm not getting anywhere fast. After a year and a half, I'm now like 19 and a half years old, working at a movie theater at nights, watching MTV. This is back when MTV actually showed music videos. Watching MTV and VH1 during the day, watching music videos during the day, you know, just drawing my, my comic stuff, and, uh, and then working my part-time job at night. And um, I'm laying on the couch watching my MTVs, and a commercial for Art Institute of Dallas comes on. And my, my mom was trying to get me into Art Institute of Dallas right out of high school, and I just was not, was not feeling it. And it's at that point I realized, you know what? I need, I need to level up, and I can't do this on my own. I need art training. So I, went, I enrolled at the Art Institute of Dallas. And back at this time, they didn't have their animation video game course, which would have really lent itself towards comics. All I had was commercial art and graphic design, a.k.a. visual communications. So it's like, fine, they're going to teach me life drawing, perspective, design. I can utilize this. 
for comics. So everything I learned there, I applied to comics. So I was doing my regular coursework so I could stay in school, plus doing all my comic book type of artwork, my sample pages and mini comics, my Wild Guard mini comics, and still working a part-time job working at a, at a movie theater now in Dallas. So that was my life. But it was necessary. It's what I needed to do. So for two years, I did hard training in learning how to be a commercial artist and graphic designer, which I did not want to do as a career and never have, never wanted to do that, but applying all that to comics. And wouldn't you know, one year, almost one year, I graduated in December, the following year, the following January, so one full year, Rob Liefeld discovered my work and hired me. And that was my big break into comics. So art school, wherever you can go to art school, whether it's community art school, school community classes at, 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 or classes at a community college yeah that's the way I want to say it classes at a community college go into an art institute go into an art college a university wherever you can go to learn to have someone help you see things in a new way will level up your game and you'll progress further faster I believe but you get out of it what you put into it so you might not like your instructors that doesn't matter Listen to what they say, go through the course, and then you can decide if that's information you want to keep or discard. But keep drawing, keep moving forward, and art instruction can help you level up faster, I believe. But like I said, it's, you get out of it what you put into it. Gang, I think y'all are awesome. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this Sunday. This is probably a super long video. Hopefully I can upload it to YouTube. If not, it will always be here on my Facebook page. Thanks for uh, watching, and all the pieces of art created for Wake Up and Draw. If you go onto Twitter and you search the hashtag Wake Up and Draw, you're going to see a lot of great artists. I saw a Chris Somney Black Panther that looked incredible. Uh, Mike Norton uh, Machine Man, which was a lot of fun. I had Craig Rousseau. I forgot what Craig Rousseau had done, but it was beautiful. Lots of cool art. So Hero Initiative is going to auction all these off. So this will be up for auction on eBay in the coming months. And all the money that is taken for this, the proceeds, I'm assuming it's all the money, um goes to benefit the creators that the Hero Initiative helps. All the creators in their golden years, you know, the guys who just aren't working in comics anymore, but created all your favorite characters, uh, in the Marvel and DC Universe especially, the Hero Initiative is benefiting those guys and, and gals, you know, helping classic legendary creators who might be having a hard time paying mortgages or bills or medical costs and stuff. So your, your donations, your, you, you buying this artwork, you come away with a sweet, hopefully, hopefully you think this is a sweet piece of artwork. There's a lot of great artists, you know, producing artwork. The things you buy or their Hero Initiative books, that money goes to help these, these creators um, to survive. So thank you for helping uh, the heroes who made our favorite heroes. That's why I do this. That's why a lot of us current comic book artists are doing this this type of stuff and participating in Wake Up and Draw and the 100 cover projects is that we want to give back to the guys and gals that gave that, that paved the way for us. So um, that's why we do this. That's why Wake Up and Draw on August 28th is the Jack Kirby event. And that's why most of us want to draw Jack Kirby creator uh, character because we want to honor the guy that influenced so many of us. So thanks again. I hope you'll have a great weekend and I'll hopefully see you again real soon on a future broadcast. Thanks for watching episode six. Take care, guys. And gals, and everybody.